Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Life with Kiko. This is a story time about how I found out I needed to have uh, kidney dialysis or dialysis as some may call it. So we're going to get right into it. It all started when, well, it, I always had a little bit of my um, health was off as a, as in like middle school. I believe no in elementary school like in sixth grade or something like that in fifth grade when I found out that I had to take blood pressure medicine so one one um big major you know sign of kidney disease or kidney failure is high blood pressure so I don't know why my uh, mother nor my doctor, my pediatrician, didn't look into why I had um, high blood pressure. But so one day I went to the doctor and they said I had high blood pressure. So they gave me high blood pressure medicine. And as a kid, you know, without your parent being there a lot, you're not going to take medicine just, you know, especially pill form, just like like an adult would constant co consistently every day you know you just want to live your life as a normal kid you know so i always knew that i had high blood pressure ever since elementary school and then um and my sisters knew it too i had two sisters i have two sisters so I didn't change my eating habits. I didn't co consistently take my medication. So time goes on. And um, when was this? Like the end of middle school came. So I was spending uh, the weekend at my grandmother's house. And that the night before, like uh, my aunt decided to cook a uh, three cheese. It probably was a 10 cheese lasagna or something like that. Her cooking was so good, but um, she decided to make the cheesiest lasagna ever. Mind you, I haven't been taking my, uh, my blood pressure medicine at, at all, you know? So I was tearing that, that thing up, you know? I was tearing up the lasagna. I was getting seconds in, in that morning. Did I? I don't think I ate that morning, but the next morning I woke up and I was just in so much pain. Like I can't even explain it to you. I was just in so much pain and you know how black people or maybe you don't have to be black. I'm not even going to put our, 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 you know, our race in a box or any other race in the box. But, um, my aunt gave me ginger ale. You know how we take ginger ale thinking everything is going to be fine or whatever, but it wasn't fine, you know. So after she noticed, like, I was throwing up, I was throwing up. And the, the weird thing about it is when I would throw up, it was only, like, clear fluid. It was just clear fluid coming out. I had nothing in my stomach but just clear fluid going out. So... She decided to take me to the hospital, children's hospital in D.C. at the time. But um, so I went to the hospital in the emergency room and the doctors was like, I can't believe you are you're still talking and alive right now. And I was like, you know, why? What's going on? So they end up telling me that my blood pressure was about 250 over let's say 190. that's so high the regular blood pressure is around 120 over 80. so that's about two times the the uh amount of my that my blood pressure was it was like two times that so so they was like, why your blood sugar is so, your blood pressure is so high? I'm like, I don't know. You know, they said, told me to take some medication, but I haven't been taking it. But I didn't go to that extent. I'm like, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm just 14 years old at the time. So they did, they ran tests. They uh, was trying to figure out why. 
So the next thing they did was did a urine test and, and then they found out that my creatinine was high. You know, your creatinine is about, if I'm correct, the definition of creatinine is the amount of waste that is in your urine or in your, you know, in your urine or something like that. So my creatinine was off the charts and, um, well, not off the charts, not yet. But it was quite high, so high that they had to do a ultrasound and a biopsy on my kidney. And so as a child, they put you to sleep. And you know that sleep beat, <laughs> that medicine that they put you to sleep would be, you know, hitting. But I'm not a drug addict, okay? I'm not a druggie, you know? But back then, you know, as a child, I was out of it because of the... You know the sleep medication they gave me and the the you know they don't didn't want me to hurt or nothing so so they took the biopsy of my kidney and then they told my uncle at the i think my uncle or my uh grandmother or my aunt either one somebody in my family uh was told that my kidney was failing and that I'm gonna need to have go to a renal doctor, meaning a kidney doctor at that time. So at that time I was going to the kidney doctor once a week, once a week to check my kidney because they know, knew that eventually I would have to go on dialysis or have a kidney transplant. So I ended up by let's say I, I learned that my kidney was failing around 14 going on 15 by the time that I hit 16 is when I had to take dialysis so I was mentally I had to mentally prepare myself as a kid and then I had the doctors prepare me like what what to expect what to you know what's going to happen Am I going to die or not? You know, you have all those thoughts of what's going to happen. Like, how is my life going to change with this new, you know, procedure I have to do? Like, I don't want to be confined. I'm I'm just getting out there, you know. I'm just new to the, to the field of life, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so... They let me know what I had to do. They let me know I had to go and get a, another procedure done, which is to get a catheter inside of my stomach. I decided to go with peritoneal dialysis, which is when you pump fluid, you get a catheter placed inside of your stomach. And the fluid that they have, like saline fluid, it gets pumped into your stomach and then basically it sits there, collect waste, and then you pump it out using a machine at home. I did not want to go to dialysis in the clinic because, you know, I go to school, um, my family goes to work, and uh, if you go to the dialysis in the clinic, hemodialysis, where they pump your blood you have to go there three times a week for four hours around four hours and nobody wanted to you know do that every every week three times a week and then you gotta go to school and you gotta do all this other stuff so I decided to do the peritoneal where they pump it in your stomach and then you flush it out at home and you do it while you sleep so that's around 12 hours of doing that the machine does it does it all. You just hook yourself up and it does it all. So they had me go to classes on how to do it myself and how to clean the catheter site and all that about, I would say about five months before I had to go into dialysis. They had placed the catheter with like, pla placed the catheter in me. Mind you, before, like, let me go all the way to the front, to, to, to the beginning. Mind you, I did not feel when my kidney was failing. Like, I didn't feel anything. No pain, no weakness. I was just living my life, you know, until one day it hit me like a train. And I was sick, you know. And that was because of my blood pressure, not because of my... It, it, well, I don't know, but... 
until that day when it hit me like a train that's when i felt the blow okay but anytime before that i did not feel anything i did not notice anything different i didn't it's, it was just like asymptomatic no symptoms at all so after that i i started dialysis i was like in high school I was in high school. I did not want to tell anybody. I didn't want to feel no pity on me. I didn't want nobody to know what I was going through. I just wanted to get with my day. I was tucking my catheter in my pants. I just did not want nobody to know. I was a little ashamed and a little like, I don't know, just like, I don't want nobody to know. Like, I, I'm a normal kid. I'm regular. There's nothing different about me, you know. I, I didn't want to be known as the kidney girl or the catheter girl or whatnot. So, mind you, um, like, so I was doing that while I was going to high school. Like, I'm 16 now, going, doing dialysis every night, hooking myself up at night and letting the machine cleanse my, you know, my blood or whatever while I sleep. And then I wake up symptoms of going through dialysis i was just like it always felt like my body wasn't right like you know how you you start to get sick or something and you feel a little weak or like it was just like you just your body just don't feel right it's just off it's just off a little bit it's just like it's just off you know you know i, I didn't feel sick or nothing it's just like my body was like it was it was feeling like it was missing something or you know like short of something like one day sorry if i keep sniffling like i don't know what's going on but one day um on dialysis like my body like was just in so much pain and so much pain because i feel like when you do dialysis like nutrients get pulled from you like it's like your life force is being pulled out of you and then like you got to try to you know make it all right again you know so that was one of my symptoms another one was you know my stomach was always bloated um sometimes the catheter site would be a little you know red or you know sore or whatnot what else Mm. sometimes it's hard to sleep you'll like I, I would it was hard for me to sleep sometimes sometimes I couldn't sleep and um that's about it I didn't really have it that bad when I started uh dialysis good news though I like six months later all praises to the most high six months later I was sleep you know, I had to go to school, but thank God, um, my doctor from Children's Hospital in D.C. Oh, I went to Children's Hospital in D.C. for my doctor's appointments, my consultations, when I put in the catheter. When they found out I needed a kidney, they automatically put me on the, the kidney list. I'm probably going a little, like, out of order but that's what they did when they found out I needed a kidney they put me on the on the kidney list they um had me go to DC Children's Hospital and um they all set me up with the peritoneal dialysis thing and you know telling me what to expect and all that so one day I was asleep and you know i had to get up for high school you know but like my aunt woke me up and said oh my goodness they got a kidney for you they got a kidney for you so that day right then and there i had to get up get dressed and drive then my uncle drive me all the way down to dc um to get my transfer because when they keep a kidney it only has a few hours until um, it dies before they have to put it into somebody so you have to be there at a at like you need to get there as soon as possible or the kidney ain't the, the kidney's not going to make it so we took my uh, I, we rushed down there we rushed down there and then um they put the kidney in me you know 
and that's what happened so that's how I found out I had to go on dialysis but this not the this is not the last time I had to go on dialysis the last time was even worse so if y'all stay tuned for the next story time I'll tell y'all about my kidney failure <laughs> My kidney failure was scary now. So this was the start time. Again, I'm gonna say this this is when I found out that the first time I found out that I needed dialysis and a kidney transplant. And then um I look forward to seeing y'all again and I would like if you would like, comment, and subscribe and um let me know if you're going through the same thing or if you went through the same thing and um how how you dealt with it what was going through your mind and what what age were you when you went through this okay you guys so i'll see y'all in the next video and um